Hello, I'm Dr. Miles Hassel. I'm an internal medicine physician at St. Vincent Hospital in Portland, Oregon, and we're going to be talking about how to resist the coronavirus, the COVID-19. Remembering that most people who get exposed to this virus do not get a significant illness. And so how do you make sure that you're part of the group that do not get a, a significant infection from the COVID-19, even if you're exposed? So we're talking about immunity here. We're talking about buttressing your own body's innate systems so that it can beat up the COVID-19 and the COVID-19 doesn't beat up you. So when we're dealing with immunity, it's worth remembering that the steps that we're talking about with respect to this particular virus will also help every aspect of your life. It helps autoimmune disease, it helps prevent cancer, it helps prevent uh, di type two diabetes, uh, it helps prevent heart disease and stroke. So the steps that we take are going to be global health benefits, not just antiviral benefits. Um, much of what we're talking about is also shown in our book, um, Good Food, Great Medicine. Uh, and so if you want sort of looking for the details and the, uh, the scientific underpinnings of, of what my recommendations are, that's the one of the places you can go to. We're going to be ma making recommendations based on outcomes data. In other words, things that have been shown in real humans to improve outcomes not theories about how the immune system works. And that makes a big difference in how you approach the subject. So let's go through some of the things. First of all, exercise. Exercise is a pro-immunity anti-inflammatory step that's really underrated. And so we'd recommend everybody, based on metabolic syndrome data, diabetes data, everybody probably should get in the habit of doing at least a little bit of exercise a couple of times a day, never sitting for more than about an hour, getting up and walking around if you're in a, in a desk job. And in so doing, start employing the body's innate immune system. Secondly, the, the diet that's have the, so far has been shown to have the greatest overall health benefit, including with respect to diabetes, heart disease, cancer, stroke, uh, and so on, is actually the Mediterranean style diet. So these are omnivorous diets, and in other words, they include fruits, vegetables, beans, grains, meats, um, uh, fish, uh, poultry. Uh, there's a whole s a spectrum of foods that have been traditionally eaten including extra virgin olive oil and uh, small amounts of alcohol. And when you look at that dietary pattern, it really is quite significant that th this and other omnivorous or all food uh, containing um, whole food diets really have by far the best outcomes data when compared to any other uh, dietary pattern. In so doing, a couple of foods are probably worth, worth eliminating or close to eliminating in your diet if you want optimal immunity. And uh, that is the sugars and refined carbohydrates. So it's things made with white flour, white rice, and sweets, especially sweet drinks. For example, I see people who feel they need to have electrolytes, which is arguable because food supplies electrolytes, but even if, they, if, even if that's not the case, they go to something like a sweetened uh, drink with electrolytes instead of something much more natural like soup or V8 juice would be the kinds of things that we would use um, even, even in that setting where people need electrolytes. We'd really s emphasize get rid of all the refined carbohydrates you can. Sugars, white rice, white flour. Um, we're going to be talking about weight as well. So when you have a broad waistline your uh, ability to withstand infection seems to go down. And exactly what the reasons for that are, are can be discussed, but the answer always ends up being, if you can keep your waistline down, your immune system's probably gonna be more uh, intact. You're gonna be more able to, to resist infections. And so now if you have excess pounds around the middle, now is a good time to start working on them by eating less, exercising more, and getting your sleep and the other factors that we talk, we'll be talking about here. As part of the uh, whole food diets, especially the Mediterranean style whole food diets, extra virgin olive oil really is a, um, an important factor, it would appear. Uh, when we compare extra virgin olive oil with any other vegetable oil, we see much more striking benefits for everything from depression to diabetes to stroke to heart disease um, and, and reductions in cancer rates. So it appears to be a useful um, tool for improving your immune system. Although while we're talking about fats, we always like to see people eat about a handful of raw nuts per day. We would recommend not eating more than that um, because they're a really potent source of calories. But around about a handful of nuts a day seems to be associated with better health outcomes, including less respiratory uh, illness. Whole grains are really an interesting factor. We talked earlier about avoiding uh, foods made with refined grains like white flour and white rice. Whereas the data for whole grains consistently shows really improve, uh, great improvements in overall health, including respiratory illness and infections. And uh, the, the, the kind that we think ha makes the most sense is things like this. 
which this is a combination of one-third rye, one-third whole oats, and one-third uh, unholed barley or brown barley. Um, and that combination has a lot of beta-glucans, a lot of fibers that remove um, um, uh, things like LDL cholesterol out of the system. It, re it helps lower your cholesterol and improves blood sugar control. You have to cook it, of course, typically done overnight in a crock pot or on, a, on the stove top, either one. But whole grains like this really are a, a, a very inexpensive form of good nutrition. Beans and lentils fall into the same category. Lentil soup, bean salads, um, uh, chilies, all these different foods contain beans and lentils, have a lot of properties for improving your immune system, including um, um, blood sugar control. While we're at it, all of this involves cooking from scratch. When you eat a lot of foods that have been processed by somebody else, the health definitely suffers. And you, we have studies such as the Nutrisante study, which, which looks into this. So we'd really recommend, if you really want to have the optimal immune system, get used to cooking simple foods at home. And once again, our book, Good Food, Great Medicine, can be, can be helpful for a lot of people for that. We're going to move now on to the microbiome, or the, the gut bacteria, the gut, the population of different bugs in the gut that really are important for weight control, immunity, blood sugar control, cancer risk, and so on. And so we'd recommend people have foods like dairy foods that are cultured, like cheeses, uh, kefir, yogurt. When you buy kefir and yogurt, make sure you buy them unflavored and then flavor them to taste for yourself at home. Another great probiotic food is fresh sauerkraut, usually found in the, in the supermarket section uh, that's refrigerated, not on the shelf. And the, the sauerkraut and actually yogurt and kefir are all quite easy to make at home as well. Apple cider vinegar deserves a special mention here, maybe a tablespoon or so a day diluted to, to taste in water or used as a salad dressing, because apple cider vinegar improves the gut microbiome and also lowers blood sugars. Both of them are positive um, uh, immune enhancing factors. Coffee and tea appear to be um, uh, part of a healthy diet as well, also having favorable effects on, on, uh, on uh, blood sugar. Um, and overall, people who drink coffee and tea seem to have better health outcomes. Moderate alcohol also. Uh, the benefits from moderate alcohol um, fall into two categories. One is better blood sugar control, um, less diabetic complications, and less heart disease and stroke. Now, the issue here is moderate. Um, we would typically say not more than a drink or two a day for men, not more than about one drink a day for women, maybe even slightly less for women. Uh, and so when we see these dietary patterns with excellent health outcomes, alcohol seems to be uh, an integral part of them. And then we get the other factors. Getting adequate sleep, scheduling adequate sleep. Having some form of heat in your system. So heat is an oddball thing to be talking about here, but things like saunas and deep hot baths probably give you a low-grade fever and seem to be associated with better health outcomes. Health outcomes in terms of total mortality, um, better blood sugar, better weight loss, better sleep. And so we often recommend um, at least uh, one deep hot bath a day any time that you suspect that you might be coming down with anything. And going back to the, what we mentioned earlier about exercise is not being sedentary. Get in the habit of staying active all day, every day, getting up every hour if you have a sit down job, walking a little faster than you normally would. Be that more vital person, not the less vital person. In doing all this, you're going to be needing to make it a priority in your day. Say, I want to be really healthy, not just now, but in 10 and 20 years, starting from whatever, whatever age you are. You might have particular risk factors for the COVID-19, like type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure. When you employ the kinds of factors that we just talked about, lots of fruits, vegetables, beans, grains, food cooked at home, um, and weight loss, then often you will improve your uh, um, uh, immunity dramatically, lower your blood pressure. Often people are able, in our practice, able to get off of their medications, reverse your type 2 by di diabetes, and, and improve your overall immunity and have less medications, less doctor's visits. So there's a lot of other benefits. For people with autoimmune diseases, this kind of approach often reduces the, the need for immunosuppressives that they're frequently on, which are all risk factors for infections. So we'd strongly recommend you aggressively pr pursue a really healthy pattern of life that you take into account all these different factors because changing one thing or two things in your life probably aren't going to make a big difference. Changing five or ten are. 
And so t have this attitude that says, I'm going to beat this virus. Even if I'm exposed to it, I'm not going to let it affect me. Thank you.